Welcome to Miss Go Electric here. Today is Sunday, November 23rd, 2025, and this is The Current, your weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. The Los Angeles International Auto Show has kicked off and there were several EV reveals and debuts at the show. Let's start with Jeep, who has officially pulled the covers off its all-electric Recon 4xe off-road SUV. The Recon EV is based on Stellantis's STLA large platform with dual electric motors delivering up to 650 horsepower and 620 pound-feet of torque, propelling from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 3.6 seconds. It comes with a standard four-wheel drive system paired with select terrain traction management with auto, sport, snow, sand, mud, and rock modes, e-locking differentials, and up to 9.1 inches of ground clearance. The Standard 33-inch tires are paired with 18-inch wheels, and the vehicle has an approach angle of 33.8 degrees, departure angle of 33.1 degrees, and a breakover angle of 23.3 degrees. It can also ford up to 24 inches of water. It will have a towing capacity of up to 3,300 pounds when equipped with the optional trailer tow group package and a payload rating of 850 pounds. The vehicle is based on a 400 volt architecture with a 100.5 kilowatt hour NMC battery pack, offering an EPA estimated range of 230 miles in the off-road focused Moab trim, extending to 250 miles in other variants. Charging is done through a CCS port with level two speeds of 11 kilowatts and a DC fast charging peak rate of 150 kilowatts. Jeep says the vehicle should be able to charge from five to 80% in 28 minutes. The vehicle will ship with a portable charging cable that can support up to 7.6 kilowatts. In conjunction with the launch, Jeep announced that they plan to integrate the North American charging system ports in order to gain access to Tesla's supercharger network. They stated availability will start in 2026 with existing North American EVs such as the Jeep Wagoneer S and Dodge Charger Daytona, followed by the 2026 Jeep Recon and other future products. To note, the company said additional details on network accessibility and adapter information for current Stellantis BEV models will be shared at a later time. Inside, the Recon nods to Jeep Heritage with a horizontal dashboard, tool-free removable doors and windows with a power opening roof, and a five-passenger cabin with a 14.5-inch touchscreen for infotainment with wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Amazon Alexa compatibility. As far as storage capacity goes, it will have a small three cubic foot frunk and 65.9 cubic feet of space with the rear seats folded and 30.3 cubic feet with the second second row seats up. The Recon starts at $65,000 MSRP for the top level rugged Moab launch trim, and more affordable trim levels will launch at a later date. The vehicle will be built in Stellantis' Toluca plant in Mexico, and early reservations are already open, but the model will hit dealerships in early 2026. The next EV grabbing attention from the LA Auto Show is the Porsche Cayenne Electric. Way back in August at the top of episode number 78, we shared most of the details and specifications for this particular vehicle. For a refresher on those details, see the link in this video's description. What's new is that Porsche has finally taken the camouflage off its new midsize all-electric SUV and started talking trim levels with pricing. The Cayenne Electric will come in two variants, including a standard standard Cayenne Electric and more powerful Cayenne Turbo Electric. The vehicle will come equipped with two charge ports, a North American charging system, DC only fast charging port on the driver's side rear fender, and a J1772 AC only charging port on the passenger side rear fender, similar to how Nissan did it with the new Leaf and how Porsche did it with the Taycan. Porsche is including a CCS DC adapter with each model sold in the US. Range information has not yet been provided and is expected to be revealed closer to delivery. The Cayenne electric models are available to order now with a base price of $109,000 and the turbo starting at $163,000. Using the online configurator, I verified that the top end spec with all the options can exceed $230,000. Deliveries are expected to begin at the end of summer of 2026. Another EV revealed in LA was from Hyundai Motor Group's luxury brand Genesis, which debuted the GV60 Magma Edition. 
We first covered the Magma sub-brand for Genesis last April. It's designed to compete with other luxury performance brands like BMW's M and Mercedes AMG lines. The GV60 Magma will include a dual motor all-wheel drive powertrain with 609 horsepower and 546 pound-feet of torque in standard mode and up to 650 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque when the 15-second boost mode is activated. That's a big leap over the regular GV60 performances, 483 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque, and enables the Magma Boost to reach 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 3.4 seconds. Key differences from the standard GV60 include a widened stance with extended wheel arches, a 0.8-inch lower ride height, restyled front and rear bumpers with enlarged air intakes for improved cooling and aerodynamics, and a rear wing. It rides on exclusive 21-inch wheels paired with beefier brakes featuring monoblock calipers and larger discs. Inside, a driving feedback system simulates gear shifting by modulating motor output and regenerative braking, complete with synthetic engine sounds, echoing tech from Hyundai's Ionic 5N but tuned for Genesis luxury focus. Adaptive dampers get magma-specific retuning, while new modes like Sprint, GT, launch control, and drift mode cater to track enthusiasts. The GV60 Magma retains the original model's 84 kilowatt hour battery and 800 volt architecture for 10 to 80% DC fast charging in 18 minutes, though its EPA range is expected to dip below the standards 252 miles due to the performance tweaks, no range figures have yet been revealed. U.S. pricing is expected to start around $75,000 with arrivals slated for late 2026. Sister brand Hyundai had their own reveal, but it was in the form of a concept vehicle called Crater. I won't spend much time on this because commenters have asked that I spend less time on coverage of concept cars, but the company describes this one explicitly as a design exploration to showcase future direction for its XRT, or Extreme Rugged Terrain lineup. The crater is also a showcase for a new infotainment design with a bring-your-own device foundation and a head-up display spanning the width of the windshield as well as many removable off-road accessories. Do you want Hyundai to make the crater? You can see these EVs and more in person at the LA Auto Show from now through Sunday, November 30th. Honda has introduced a new home charging incentive program tied to their popular 2026 Prologue SUV. Buyers can now receive up to $1,250 towards installation of a level two wall-mounted charger through its Honda home electrification platform. Alternatively, Prologue buyers can accept a $500 sales credit for opting out of the new home charging setup. Research firm Deloitte found that nearly 50% of people who do not plan to charge their EVs at home cite challenges such as the installation costs and uncertainty on how to go about installing an EV charger at home. Other companies offering home charging installation programs include Ford with their Power Promise program, which provides a complimentary level two charger and standard installation through their partnership with QMerit when you buy or lease a Mustang Mach-E or F-150 Lightning. The program runs until until January 5th of 2026. In Ford's own study, they found that nearly 90% of shoppers say that they would be more likely to buy an electric vehicle if they knew that they could charge at home. Over 15,000 Ford EV customers have taken advantage of this program since its inception in October of last year. Hyundai had a program which expired at the end of July. They used to offer a complimentary level two charger and up to $600 in installation support. Nissan was offering complimentary level two hardware from Wallbox for Aria owners, but that program has also expired. Several local utilities also subsidize home charging installation. In fact, we teamed up with Michigan's largest power company, DTE, last month, promoting that program with a short form video. We'll include a link to that in this video's description. Your local utility might have a similar program. As a reminder, the Federal Alternative Fuel Infrastructure Tax Credit, which provides a 30% tax credit up to $1,000 for home charger installations is also still in effect. It is set to expire on June 30th of 2026. If you don't own an EV yet, would you be more likely to buy one if the home charger and installation was complimentary?
You have heard us say this before, but we believe that the experience of owning an EV is the most positive life enhancement when you have access to convenient, low-cost overnight charging. We love to see buyers taking advantage of programs like these, which remove barriers to EV adoption. Battery swapping is soon to become a reality in the U.S. for e-bikes. In a bid to prevent residential lithium-ion battery fires from uncertified illegal batteries and to support the city's booming e-bike delivery workforce, the New York City Department of Transportation announced the rollout of the nation's first public battery swapping program for e-bikes. The initiative kicks off with 25 certified swapping and charging cabinets slated for installation in high-traffic delivery zones, including much of Manhattan, downtown Brooklyn, Williamsburg, Long Island City, and parts of the South Bronx. Building on a successful 2024 pilot that proved the technology's safety and ease, the cabinets will allow riders to exchange depleted batteries in under a minute for fully charged UL certified ones. Each cabinet features advanced safeguards, including real-time health monitoring, automatic malfunction alerts, and built-in fire suppression systems. Riders can access the system through a subscription membership, with officials pledging to keep it equitable for the estimated 80,000 delivery workers zipping through New York City streets daily. Pricing has not yet been announced. Public input on exact sites and designs will shape the project, with utility upgrades targeted for 2026 and first cabinets live by 2027. Our initial concern is related to the fact that there are hundreds of e-bike brands selling thousands of unique models in the U.S. right now. They utilize more than 100 incompatible battery designs. These unified swap stations will support only a very small fraction of the e-bikes currently in use around the city. The program inherently benefits and services a select group of riders. The effort to improve congestion, safety, and pollution when it comes to New York City traffic has been ongoing over the last few years. The city launched an e-bike trade-in program this past spring, which swapped out uncertified rides for safer UL-certified models. They also recently implemented a 15-mile-per-hour top speed limit for e-bikes, e-scooters, and pedal-assist commercial bikes at the end of October. More affordable, efficient, and clean transportation can benefit everyone, especially in high-density communities like New York City. This week, we are headed to California for a multi-day camping experience with the all-electric Pebble Flow Travel Trailer. Join us on our other social media pages for some behind-the-scenes stories, and let us know in the comments any questions you want answered. On another note before we wrap up, I suppose you've noticed the oil barrel and gas can on my desk. I imagine that some of you demand an explanation. The final news story of this broadcast is that Miss Go Electric has officially adopted petrol. Let me explain. Each Sunday, producer Tim takes a deep breath and manages the comment section. Most of that work is showing appreciation for viewers like you and answering questions posed by well-intentioned and curious people. Some of it is defending attacks and managing EV lies with a fire hose of truth and data. Through that process, he formed an unlikely bond with one curmudgeonly wayward commenter who needed a job and a home. He showed up at the studio with this little guy who now lives here in the studio. We've added an anti-hero to the payroll. Mr. Petrol will be our resident devil's advocate and help share the truth about going electric. Stay tuned for more to come on that. These have been our top EV news stories for this week. We hope you'll consider subscribing and sharing this video online so we can continue producing this show among the other videos we create here. Thank you for watching, have a happy Thanksgiving, and until next time, drive, fly, ride, go electric.